The alternate story for generating binary data sets with labels 0 or 1 is, is the following. Now, the problem that happened last time was there were too many parameters and the too many parameters problem did not happen because you had a coin that you tossed to decide whether its label is 1 or 0. That was just one parameter. One parameter we can still manage. So, we will stick to that assumption, the same assumption, right? So, that we still have a box and the box has a coin with parameter p. That decides the label y equals 1 or y equals 0. That is in our case, it could be spam or not spam. This part of the story, we are not going to change because that is just one parameter. We can live with one parameter. The problem was what happens in the second step? In the second step, we said that, well, we had all these possibilities 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 1, 1, 1 on this side and the same thing on this side also. And there were 2 power d of these and each one had to be given a probability. So, we assumed that dice, there were too many parameters. We have to let go of that assumption. Now, what we are going to do here is do a simplifying assumption which says that well, I go into the spam room. So, let us say this is the spam side of the world. This is the non-spam side of the world. I still have to be able to generate each of these. Potentially, I need to associate probabilities with each of these uh, uh, emails. The way I am going to associate probabilities now is going to be by saying that instead of a dice which has 2 power d faces, I am going to say I have d coins. And in, if d is 3, then there I, have, I just have 3 coins on this side. Similarly, on this side, I have 3 coins. And I will tell you what these coins are in a minute. Okay, green. I have 3 coins here as well. Right? Now, what are these coins? Well, if there are d features, which means d words, now, each of this coin is going to correspond to a word. Now, this is word 1, this is word 1 coin, this is word 2, this is word 3. Similarly, this is word 1, this is word 2, this is word 3. Now, each coin, so let us look at the spam side, the orange coins. Now, what does this coin say? Well, there is some probability associated with each of these coins. And that probability I am going to mark as P11, P12, P13, right. So, P1i means this 1 is to say that y equals 1. That is, this is in, this is in the spam room, the spam world of, of things. This i says which word? This says this is word i. So, basically what I am going to say is that for every word, I am going to associate a coin with it. And that coin will decide whether that word is there in my email or not there in my email. Which means that first I toss the original coin with probability p to decide the label, the coin falls heads. I go into the spam room, there are d different coins. I toss each of these coins. Now, whichever coin falls heads, those words appear in my email. Whichever coin falls tails, those words do not appear in my email. That is how I generate the emails. For example, in this world, if I had to generate an email, let us say 011, then what should have happened is that the first coin should have fallen. So, 0, 1, 1 means that first coin should have fallen tail, the second coin should have fallen head and the third coin should have fallen head. There are three coins, one for each word. The word 1 coin should have fallen tails and so that word is not there in my email. Word 2 and word 3 would have fallen heads and so that word is there in my email. Of course, each word has a different probability of occurring. And each word is independently generated of the other words in the spam side of things, right? So, we will talk about this independence in a bit. But let me finish this story. Now, the same thing happens to the non-spam side also, right? So, the non-spam side also has three coins corresponding to the same words, word 1, word 2, word 3. But then these are different coins, meaning the probabilities are different. So, here the probabilities are going to be P01, P02 and P03, right. So, P0i would mean that, well, we are in the non-spam world, y is 0 and then i would still mean word i. Well, what does this mean? Why do you need two different sets of coins? Well, it is the same idea. 
Now, if a word lottery is what you care about, now in the spam world, the chance that the word lottery comes is higher. So, the corresponding probability, let us say word 1 was lottery, so P11 is going to be higher, maybe 0.8. In the spam world, 80 percent of the time, you see the word lottery. The same word, you may not see that frequently on the non-spam world, right? So, which means that that probability is going to be lower, the same word, but then the probability is going to be different. So, P01 might be smaller, maybe only 10 percent, right? So, so this is the, the reason why you need two sets of coins. So, basically then the story is as follows. So, you start with flipping the first coin that decides which room you have to enter, the spam room or the non-spam room. If it falls heads, you enter the non-spam room and inside the spam room, you have D coins. You toss each one to recite the email and then you repeat the same process, come out, go to the original box, press it, see whether it is spam or non-spam, go to the corresponding room and then toss the D coins and then repeat this, right. So, this is how you would uh, generate the um, generate the data. Um, now, let us let us understand how many features are there in this, uh, sorry, how many parameters are there here, right. So, the number of parameters of this model, good time to pause and think, right. So, how many parameters are there in this picture that we need to learn if we had to learn from data? Well, one again, the same thing for generating, deciding which room I have to enter, the spam or non-spam, that is a single coin. But inside the spam room, now I do not have a 2 power d faced dice, which means I do not have 2 power d minus 1 parameters. Instead, I just have d coins, which means that I just have d numbers to decide, right. So, I just have to decide the probabilities of each of these coins, which is d. Same thing in the non-spam room, uh, another d, right. So, the whole thing is just 2d plus 1. Now, 2d plus 1 is an exponentially smaller number than 2 power d plus 1, right. So, this number, number of parameters is still manageable. We can still manage this, right. So, even if 10,000 words, you are still doing to 20,000 parameter estimation as opposed to 2 power, uh, you know, 10,000, which is simply impossible. This we can still manage, right. So, this is a manageable number. Right. Now, the question is, what do we lose by doing this, right. So, in other words, of, of course, we will see how to learn these parameters from data, which I have not put down the algorithm yet, that will come next. Um, but before we go to the algorithm, what is it that is happening here, right. So, if you think about this a bit, this is telling the following. Let us say I tossed a coin, it fell heads, which means that I need to generate a spam email. Now, there are 10,000 words in my dictionary. I have the word lottery, I have the word uh, money, I have the word dollar and other words as well. Now, for each of these words, you have a coin associated with a corresponding probability. Now, let us say I toss the coin for lottery and it fell heads, which means that the email is going to have the word lottery. Now, if I gave you that information, that the email has the word lottery, it is a spam email, it has the word lottery and I ask you, does this affect your uncertainty about whether the word money occurs in this email or not? Now, you might say that, well, yes, it, it will affect, right. So, because if I know that the word lottery is there, I would assume that my chances that the word money occurs is going to go up. But here we are saying that that is not the case because lottery has its own coin, money has its own coin. Now, if I flip that lottery coin, it fell heads, that does not affect the chance that whether the word money occurs in my data or not. Because I am going to flip the coin money, money's coin, it has its own probability, it does not change by knowing that lottery has occurred. These are independent, given that it is spam, right. So, so, knowing that it is spam, the words occurring in an email are completely independent. This is an assumption we are making. Uh, it may not necessarily hold in practice as I have given the example right now. Nevertheless, we make this assumption because it is a much more reasonable model in terms of the number of parameters we have. So, this assumption that we are making here 
uh, is what is called as uh, and this is important it's called as the class conditionally conditional independence assumption we'll talk more about this uh, when we put down the formula exactly but then here it just means that given that it is spam the features are independent of each other given that it is not spam the features are independent of each other right so given the class the features are independent of each other that's why it's called class conditional conditioned on the class whether you are spam or not once i tell you that then knowing that it is lottery is there does not affect my chance of whether money is there or not right so the assumption is that knowing that it is spam is is all you need right so any more information about whether lottery is there whether dollar is there is not going to affect the chance that money is there or not that's what it means same thing for the other thing knowing that money is there or um, dollar is there will not affect my chance of lottery they are independent coin tosses right so but then they are independent given that the class is spam right so class conditionally they are independent right so that's the assumption that we are making here and that's the uh, that's the main assumption that is allowing us to reduce the parameter space from 2 to the d plus 1 to 2 to the d uh, to 2 2 into d okay so now let's let's just for uh, completeness let's put down the equations here because that's what we'll finally end up uh, uh, playing around with when we have an algorithm so so the step 1 formally defining is the following we are saying p of y equals 1 is p there is some probability p that the label is 1 and in step 2 we are saying the probability that x is well some feature f1 f2 dot 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 fd think of these features as some value 0 1 each feature corresponds to whether a word is there or not it can take value 0 or 1 given y now what is this going to be well we are saying here that this is going to be the this each of these features is independent given the class so this is going to be prob product of i equals 1 to d I will write this down and then we will explain what this is. So, this is going to be p y i power f i into 1 minus p y i power 1 minus f i. Well, what it's, it's maybe it is a good idea to take an example here. So, think of um, uh, your y uh, happened to be 1 for now. Let us say it is spam. Now we are asking what is the probability that x equals 0 1 0 given y equals 1 given that it is spam what is the chance that I see this particular email well if I is when why would this email be generated well what is the chance of generating this email given that it is spam well for th to generate word 1 in the spam world I use a coin with probability p 1 1 and to generate word 2 I use a coin with probability p 1 2 and to generate word 3 I use a coin with probability p 1 3. Now p 1 1 is the probability that the coin falls heads but then here the coin has fallen tails which means that that should have happened with probability 1 minus p 1 1 and independently I will toss the second coin which has fallen heads with probability p 1 2 that is the chance of the second coin falling heads. Now the third coin again is 0 which means that it should have fallen with probability p 1 3. Now this is the probability of seeing 0 1 0 given that y equal to 1 right. So you, you if it is 0 you multiply by 1 minus this quantity if it is 1 you multiply the same quantity. If you remember this is what we did similar thing we did for uh, our Bernoulli uh, maximum likelihood estimation when we wrote down the likelihood function if you want to go back and refresh that. Now this is what exactly I have written it in a general form here right. So if f i equals 1 if this quantity is 1 then which means that the corresponding word occurred then that occurred with the probability p y i right. So where y is 1 or 0 that will determine whether I am looking at the coin in the you know the spam room or the non spam room right. So if, uh, if y is 1 then all these coins that I am carrying about is in the spam room right. So it is going to be p 1 the, the superscript is going to be 1. 
P1, the ith coin, well, if it occurred, if the coin, if the word was present, then the probability that I'll multiply for that particular term is just going to be P1 i. If the word is not present, then I'm going to multiply 1 minus P1 i, if y is 1. Otherwise, it will be P0 i and 1 minus P0 i, right? So, this is a more compact notation to kind of say that whatever we are trying to do, we are exactly getting that in a compact way, right? Um, as I said, the features here, essentially this multiplication um, is allowed, right? So, this multiplication just says we are justified in doing this because we are assuming features are uh, conditionally independent. given label, right. So, the conditioning is important only if you assume that the label, I mean given that we know it is spam, then we go to the spam room and then the feature, the coins are, you know, you toss them independently of each other, okay. So, this is, so basically what we are saying is that now we have put down p of y equals 1 and p of y equals 0 will be 1 minus p. And we have also put down what is the chance that you get, you see a email given that y equals 1 or y equals 0, which means that essentially these two are giving us a model for p of x comma y for any x and y, because I can multiply p of x given y and p of y to get probability of any pair x comma y, we know that. So, which means we have kind of telling, tell, we have specified for every email comma label pair, we are specifying a probability here with only 2d plus 1 parameters. D for the coins in the spam room, D for the coins in the non-spam room and one to decide which room to go to. So, the model is fixed, it is a reasonable model in terms of number of parameters. Um, now, the question is how do I learn from this model, right. So, that is the next question we need to ask, right. So, how to, um, how to estimate the parameters. There are 2d plus 1 parameters and the question is how to estimate the parameters. Well, we already know some techniques to do estimation. We will use similar techniques, right. So, the solution to this is going to involve, well, you have data, you know a model that generates the data and the model has 2d parameters. Well, you need to estimate these parameters. So the simplest way that we know is to use the method of maximum likelihood. Now, we will see next how to estimate these parameters and what kind of estimation, I mean what kind of values that we get uh, when we do this estimation, which we will see next. Thank you.